Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Creative Adventures. So as you can see, I have a completely different little setup here today because I'm doing something completely new. I have recently become fascinated with the art of acrylic pouring um, and specifically the type of acrylic pouring where you mix in additives that cause these natural cells to appear in the paint as it spreads over time uh, due to the differing density between the paint and the additives that you add. Um, so I've been fascinated with this for like a month now and Michaels had a good sale going on this weekend and I had a couple of really good coupons that allowed me to go get all the supplies I needed for like 60% off. So I was like, yep, this is the time. This is when I'm going to try this new craft because I can get everything really cheap. Uh, so yeah, I just came home with all my supplies and I've got my canvases, got all my acrylic paints, uh, and my additives and all that good stuff and it's storming outside right now. Um, it's a Friday night and it's actually storming really bad so if you see some flashes of light and hear some really loud rumbling that's thunder in the background but it's a perfect night to sit inside and paint because I can't do anything else anyway. So let me get this camera situated a little bit better. Um, this is like I said my first time doing this so this is complete experimentation. I have no idea if this is going to turn out the way I actually want it to uh, but here's hoping. I'm sure I'll get something I can use out of it. So let me get my camera turned around and get situated a little better um, and see if I can't get everything in frame and I'll try to walk you through what I'm doing. I'm also going to leave several links in my blog to other artists that have kind of helped me find this method. I've picked up a lot of tips and tricks from uh, several different artists I found on YouTube and a Facebook forum that I found uh, that I've pretty much just been stalking for like a month now. Uh, so I'll leave lots of links in my blog to all of the different artists that kind of inspired me to try this particular method. So let's get started. All right, as I mentioned, this is gonna get messy. So I kind of uh, double proofed my work surface here. This is actually my dining room table because it's the biggest work surface I have in the house. I've got just a standard drop cloth down and then on top of that, I've actually put down some just parchment paper from my kitchen and I've used painter's tape to hold it down and hold the pieces together. Uh, it worked out kind of nice because I've also got several or four of these little plastic miniature like condiment cups and I happened to like set this up where these paint stripes are right along the edge of my canvas here. This is a 16 by 20 canvas by the way. And this is just a cheap canvas. This is like the cheapest one you can get because obviously this is my first time doing this so I didn't want to uh, waste my really nice expensive canvases. So this is just a um, cheap canvas. The paint lines up right along the edges of my canvas and I'm using these little condiment cups to prop up my canvas off of the surface and it, it's nice because I'm gonna need to pick this up and move it as I'm working and I can just line my little condiment cups up on this blue line and it's perfect. So now my canvas is just a little bit elevated off of my table. So acrylic pouring is exactly how it sounds. We're going to mix acrylic paints up so that they are fluid enough to actually pour on the canvas and then manipulate them from there by rotating and twisting our canvas. You can manipulate them by blowing with a straw. So I've heard of some people hitting it with a hammer to get splatters. But the point is that your acrylics are fluid enough to actually pour into a pattern of some sort. The particular method I have found really, really interesting is to use additives of some sort to create these organic cells that emerge from the different densities of the paint and the additives. The method I've chosen today is to use 100% liquid silicone in some of your paint mixtures, um, not all of them, but in some of them, and then torch, yes, that's right, I said torch, torch the paint after it gets on the canvas to actually make that lighter paint rise to the surface and create those organic cells. This is just a butane torch that I have in my kitchen. It's like a creme brulee torch. I already had it, so worked out perfect. For paints, you can use just about any type of acrylic paint you want. I actually just have a whole bunch of Liquitex paints in all kinds of color. Like I have a 48 color set of Liquitex paints. Um, so I'm gonna be using those. I haven't really decided what colors I'm gonna use yet. But then you just 
thin those paints down with medium and water until they're a fluid enough consistency to pour. Based on my experience decorating cookies and using royal icing, if, if you're familiar with those different kinds of consistencies, it looks to be like a um, flooding consistency. So if you're used to like decorating cookies like I am, I think I'll be able to get down the consistency pretty well. There's a lot of different ways to um, actually get the paint onto the canvas. There's what's called a dirty pour, which is you mix all of your acrylic paints up separately and then you pour them all into one cup together, give it a swirl or not, and then pour that onto your canvas. A flip cup is similar. You're using a dirty pour, but you actually take your canvas upside down, flip it over so your cup is now upside down, let it sit for a minute so that all the paint actually sinks onto the canvas, and then kind of pull the cup away at an angle. And I'm thinking that might be what I try, we'll see. Um, and then there's, obviously you can just pour individual colors if you wanna control your pattern a little bit more. There's lots of different methods to doing this. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to try the Dirty Pour Flip Cup. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not real sure yet. We're just gonna wing it like we always do here on Creative Adventures. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what colors I'm gonna use. I've actually got my little color wheel up over on my phone over here. I kinda wanna go for earthy tones, but I also want there to be some really rich colors in there as well. And I also think I wanna do quite a bit of negative space. So the way you would do that is to mix up a bunch of white or kind of an off-white color. I guess, it, your, I guess your negative space could be any color, but mix up more of that to actually pour outside of your cups. I'll show you what I mean. I know I'm getting, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. So for my negative space, I'm actually gonna be using this unbleached titanium. And my lighting is terrible, by the way, and I apologize for that, especially for a video like this but it is nighttime, so I have no ambient light from outside, and I've got my, my big soft box set up over to the side because of how much space I need to do this. So my lighting's terrible right now, and I apologize. So for my negative space, I'm going to be using this unbleached titanium. I'm also gonna be mixing up some of this to put in my dirty cups as well. Um, I'm gonna be using some raw umber, which is a really deep dark brown color. I love this color. I'm going to also be using deep violet and phthalo green, which are two really rich colors. But I'm also going to add in a couple of metallics. This is a metallic copper, and then this is also a metallic um, peridot. It's a lighter green, but still really pretty. It'll be a little bit shiny. Now, I think with the metallics, I'm probably gonna run the risk of them sinking just a bit and losing them under especially the white, which is heavier, but we'll see. We'll see how this is all gonna play out. So I'll probably speed through most of the mixing part because this is gonna take a while. But essentially what we're gonna do is, I've got a bunch of these small-ish solo cups here. So first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of paint into each one of my cups. So this one's going to be quite a bit of white and I have no idea how much of this paint I should actually make like I'm totally just guessing here here's hoping I end up with enough paint to actually cover this canvas and I pretty much just used that whole tube well might as well put it all in there okay let me see if I can move my light and make this a little bit better okay that might be a little bit better for trying to see what I'm doing but as you can see I put quite a bit more paint in this cup than I did this one uh, this one's just going to be mixed into my dirty, cor dirty pour cups, and this one's going to be the one I use for actually my negative space. I hope that's enough. I have absolutely no idea if I'm doing this right or not. We'll see. That's the beauty of experimentation. Okay, so I've got my colors in my cup. Now we need to add some medium to this and some water to get them fluid enough to pour. Now Liquitex actually makes a medium called pouring medium and that's what I was actually trying to find today. However, Michael's was actually out of it. So I resorted to just a gloss medium. I have not seen this particular medium used in any of the videos I've watched or tutorials. So here's change number one. We're gonna see if this even works the way I want it to. But we're gonna add a little bit of this medium to each one of these cups and then we're going to add water to each one 
to thin it out even more. And you don't, from what I was reading, you want to add about, I feel like this is just not enough paint, man. I guess we'll see. Okay, so you want to add probably 20 to 30 percent pouring medium um, to your paint amount and then you'll use water a little bit at a time, add it to it and then stir it in a little bit at a time until it gets to the consistency that you want. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. And I think you probably want to just eyeball this because the way that you get those beautiful organic cells is between different densities in your paint, which using different paints is gonna do that already just because different pigments have different weights and dis densities themselves, but you vary, I'm sure that you vary it even more by not explicitly measuring your medium in water and just kind of eyeballing it. At least that's my theory. <laughs> All right, so I just have a bunch of popsicle sticks and I'm gonna use that to stir each one of these up. So you wanna get your pouring medium fully mixed into your paint before starting to add water. And then once it's fully incorporated, you just wanna add distilled water a little bit at a time, stirring between each addition until you get to that consistency you're looking for. I am almost positive I'm gonna need more of this. I'm gonna go ahead and make more because like there's no way, fortunately I bought another tube of that stuff. Now the consistency that we're looking for, like I said before, is kind of like flood consistency for royal icing. Or what's a good example? A good example would probably be like the consistency of a nice thick shampoo. You want it to pull just a bit on top of your popsicle stick, but then you want it to freely drip off it back into the cup in a solid stream. You don't want it to drip off in like clumps or big drops. You actually want it to stream off of your popsicle stick. We're not dripping at all, so we got a long way to go. So I'm gonna continue adding water to this, and then I'll come back and show you what the right consistency looks like. Or I should say, what I think the right consistency looks like, because let's be real, this is my first time doing this. All right, I think this is probably just about right. So when I lift it up, you can see it pulls on the top of the stick, but if I turn it up, it drips off in a continuous stream. See that? Hope you're able to see that. So I think this one's probably pretty good to go. All right, I'm gonna mix up the rest of my colors. This is gonna take a little while. Uh, so once I get that done, we will come back and actually start the fun part, which is the pouring. All right, I have all of my colors mixed up. The last thing to do before we start mixing all these colors together to get them ready to pour is to add some silicone into some of the colors. I think I'm gonna put it in all of the colors except the white and the brown. So I think I'm gonna put it in both of the greens and the copper and the violet. You only need a couple of drops per color and at least from what I've read or what I've watched in other videos, the more you stir, after putting the silicone in, the smaller cells you, were, you will get because it disperses the silicone more throughout the paint. So you can either not stir at all or just give it a once around and you'll get much bigger cells. So I think that's what I'm gonna do because I like the look of those bigger ones. I'm gonna add a couple of drops to each of these colors and then we'll start mixing all of them together into two other cups to pour them onto the canvas. I bought this at Home Depot. I, I'm pretty sure it's 100% silicone. It actually doesn't say on the bottle. Um, I know like treadmill lubricant and stuff like that is 100% silicone liquid. This is actually a garage, was in the garage door lubricant section. So I'm pretty sure this is 100% silicone, um, but it doesn't actually say, uh, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, that was way, that came out way faster than I was expecting. Okay, so that one has a crap load of silicone in it. I'm just gonna give this like a once around. Ooh. Like literally just stir it one time. Okay, I think we're ready to start mixing up our colors. These are two empty cups and I'm going to start just mixing my colors with the exception of this one. This is my negative space. I'm gonna put that off to the side so I don't accidentally pour it in. I'm gonna start with the green here and I'm just going to pour some into each cup 
And I may vary the order that I pour these in. I'm gonna go with some light green. And I'm actually pouring it right into the middle. And I kinda wanna pour it high too so they mix a little bit. Let's go with the violet. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white. This it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I'm gonna add some of this brown. This is the raw umber. And then let's go back with the light green. Some copper right on top of that. And I'm just gonna keep going back and forth, adding more and more color in here to my cups. This honestly feels a little bit like soap making, though. like I'm getting ready to do an in the pot swirl or something, seriously. Okay. That's what we have right now. So what we're going to try to do, <laughs> I emphasize that we're trying, we're going to try to do a flip cup. I really need a piece of wood, but you know what? I'm gonna use my cutting board. Move that for a second. So I want my cups to be kind of catty cornered from each other. So I'm going to set them catty cornered on my cutting board. This feels like a really bad idea. I'm gonna have to put those closer though so that I can use my hand. Okay. So. <laughs> this feels like a terrible idea, but we're doing it anyway. Okay, I've got my cups sandwiched in between there. Oh boy. Oh, I did it, I did it, I did it. Okay, so we're gonna set that down. Try to get my arm out from underneath there. <laughs> okay, now I've got two upside down cups full of paint. That's ridiculous. That was a little bit stressful. I'm gonna make sure this is nice and elevated. Last thing I've got is my negative space color here. Make sure it's nice and fluid. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slide this this way just a tad. Oh my God, look how pretty that already is. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my negative space color Not nearly enough. Okay, let me mix up some more real quick. Okay, I mixed up some more of this unbleached titanium. As much of this out of this cup as I can. I'm just using my uh, popsicle stick here to spread it around a bit. Now for the moment of truth, we remove the cups. It's beautiful, but I didn't make enough paint. <laughs> I'm also not sure that I thinned it out enough. So I definitely did not make enough paint, but I love, love, love this color combination. So I'm going to see if I can save it by mixing up more of my white color to fill in this spot where it's just... So one thing's for sure, you have a shitload of paint doing this. I definitely don't think I made my colors um, 
or made any of it thin enough. I think it all needed to be thinner. I do see some cells popping up though. So I think maybe that silicone is working the way I expect it to. I'll know in a minute after I hit it with a torch. I think the amount of paint I made up would have been ideal for like a square canvas, maybe like a third of this size. I seriously misjudged how much paint I would need. I'm gonna go need to clean up real quick. So you guys, I think I may have saved it. I think I may have actually saved it because this is looking nice and smooth and like really, really beautiful right now. And I'm like so excited. I'm gonna hang this on the wall, man. Now that I've got it all poured, I'm going to take my butane torch and just lightly hit over the areas with color. This should actually bring that silicone to the surface. and pop any bubbles in the process. Oh, there we go, I'm seeing some of it. I'm especially seeing it happen in that um, metallic green and the violet. The copper metallic doesn't seem to really be doing it. You guys, let me get my camera down off the tripod and I'll bring it around and show you. So all of those little, um, round spots that just kind of pop up organically are called cells. That's what I was talking about that the silicone does and the torch actually helps to bring that up to the surface. This is, this is gorgeous. Oh, I love, love, love how that color turned out. This side though is my favorite. On this side I got a lot more of that light green and then the dark, the phthalo green came through a lot more on this side. So I imagine I would frame it that way, maybe. Looking at it from all sides, I'm not sure. Maybe I would do it up and down. That part right there looks really neat too. I definitely didn't lose the copper. There's just so much to look at. Oh, that's just, I love it. Um, okay, so after this painting dries, I'll take some good pictures for you and then pop that up at the end of the video. Um, and then after a couple of weeks, I'll actually varnish this because these colors will get dull once it dries. So I'll varnish it so that they stay shiny and uh, I may actually hang this piece on my wall. We'll see. Well, that's it for my first pour, man. I think I may actually set my camera up, back up on the tripod and do another one now that I have an idea of how much paint I actually need to use. Um, so yeah, stay tuned because there will be more pour videos coming, I'm sure, because no kidding, I bought a whole lot of paint. I bought a lot of paint. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope this was informative. Like I said, I'll leave links on my blog for all of the artists that I've come across that have inspired me to try this particular painting style. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. So if you have any comments or questions about any of the materials I was using or um, have any suggestions for you know future projects or anything like that, let me know down in the comments below because I'd love to hear from you. Um, anyway, yeah, we'll see you next time on Creative Adventures.